Hey, God, it up, it up, and again, while I've been like possible, 1966, there was an Armageddonian scoop that took place that stirred Gwangwangiria into the state of Gwangwamentusa and Lakwa City. After when some of our past heroes plus our living heroes, who so still their life now, all of them don't gotta drink hero beer finish, then begin to set Gwangwangiria into the state of Rodeos when it caused the 1966 scoop. So, right now, I'm gonna take you back to history. And for those Indomie generation, make una open na here, make una listen. Although this story, this documentary, you know to enter anyway, but some truth they inside. So make una just watch her. Una we be say una know how it happen. Make una begin shaping up for the comment session. May we begin educate ourselves. But I know we are like there, I know we are true day for inside. Maybe last last I feel talk small. He don't read. In the early hours of 15th January 1966. A group of young army officers, mostly from the Igbo ethnic group, led what is now known as the first military coup in Nigeria. The coup was aimed at overthrowing the civilian government headed by Prime Minister Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, whom the plotters accused of corruption, nepotism, and incompetence. The coup resulted in the deaths of several high-ranking politicians and military officers, including Prime Minister Balewa, Premier of the Northern Region. Sir Amadu Bello, Premier of the Western Region, Chief Samuel Akintola, Finance Minister Festus Okoti Ibo, and Brigadier Samuel Adesujo Ademulegun, who was killed in bed with his wife by Major Timothy Onwatuegwu. The coup leaders, under the leadership of Major Chukwuma Kadunanziogwu, announced the establishment of a military government to purge Nigeria of corruption and to restore dignity to the Nigerian people. The coup plotters attacked the cities of Kaduna, Ibadan, and Lagos, while also blockading the Niger and Benue River within a two-day span of time before they were subdued. The general officer commanding the Nigerian army, Johnson Agui Ironsi, was compelled to take control of the government of a country in upheaval, inadvertently putting Nigeria's nascent democracy on hold. Agui Ironsi's ascendancy to power was, however, deemed a conspiracy by the coup plotters who were mainly Igbo officers to pave the way for him to be head of state of Nigeria. Agui Ironsi was of Igbo extraction too. Consequently, the retaliatory events by northern members of the Nigerian army that led to deaths of many innocent Igbo soldiers and civilians, which eventually led to the Nigerian civil war. The 1966 Nigerian counter-coup, or the so-called July rematch, was the second of many military coups in Nigeria. It was masterminded by Lieutenant Colonel Murtala Mohammed and many northern military officers including Major Theophilus Danjuma, Captain Joseph Garba, Captain Ibrahim Taiwo, Lieutenant Mohamedou Buhari, Lieutenant Ibrahim Babangida, Lieutenant Ibrahim Bako, Lieutenant Maman Vatsa, Lieutenant Buka Suka Dimka, 2nd Lieutenant Sani Abacha, 2nd Lieutenant Mohamedou Gado Nasco, and Corporal John Shagaya. The coup began as a mutiny at roughly midnight on 28 July 1966 and was a reaction to the killings of northern politicians and officers by soldiers of mostly Igbo extraction on 15 January 1966. The July counter-coup resulted in the murder of Nigeria's first military head of state, General Johnson Agui Ironsi, and Lieutenant Colonel Adekunle Fajuyi, the military governor of western Nigeria, who was hosting a visiting Agui Ironsi, in Ibadan. At 4 a.m. on July 29, 1966, soldiers led by Theophilus Danjuma and Joseph Garba drove into government house, Agodi Ibadan. Their mission was to kidnap and kill Ironsi. The gentleman officer in Adekunle Fajuyi, however, took over. He refused to allow his commanding officer to be killed under his roof. He felt it would give rise to Yoruba. Igbo suspicion and everlasting hatred, woven into a conspiratory theory. Unfortunately, he paid the supreme price for his courage. Upon the termination of Iransi's government, the Kupis installed Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowan, a northern officer, as the head of state. The 1966 Nigerian coup and counter-coup were two significant events that shaped the country's history. The coups had far-reaching consequences on Nigeria's politics, economy, and social fabric, and their legacy is still felt today. The events of the coups serve as a reminder of the dangers of ethnic and religious tensions in a diverse society and the importance of building institutions that can withstand political instability and violence. Hey God. Okay, now, 
make a quick chipping some mental diagnosis of mental ideology for inside this documentary and historical medulla meme. So make I just start from where Jacobo go on for takeover as a military head of state. After when they don't buy Agu Yerusi plus the a Yoruba military governor when Agu Yerusi go visit after they don't buy that too. Now the next person when he's supposed to be head of state was Ojuku. But because eh, now the northern military now he plan the coup. When I take by Agu Yerusi, and Agu Yerusi, na brother to Ojuku, which is the same tribe, Ibo Ibo. So the northern, we are very, very in the Taitiko Bohaha. And the same Sam say, if they hand over power to Ojuku, Ojuku go still lead another coup. And pay back to all of the way we say the costicolized Agu Yurosi plus the Yoruba military governor go the by join Agu Yurosi for Yoruba land. So because of that, the answers refused to give the power to Ojuku because Ojuku was the one that was due for the position. They not give Ojuku the power. They can't say. By right, the person when he supposed to take that position was an Yoruba man, too. But the Yoruba man refused, you know, say military, now by rank by rank. So after they don't buy Agu Yerose as a head of state, the person that is next to Agu Yerose was an Yoruba man. The Yoruba man declined. Debunk and reject the offer. Say he no go carry. He no want be head of state. So after that Yoruba man, the next in command was Ojuku. So now they did not give Ojuku. They can go give General Yakubu Gohan. So now Ojuku can talk. Say ah, now me do for this position. Since this Yoruba man say he no go fit take this position. Now my position will be this. One. I'm gonna give me. They can say no. They not fit give Ojuku. And Ojuku can say, if he agree, make Yakubu go on, go be the next head of state. That is to say, he go call the salute in own junior. In own junior will come be superior. Now Ojuku say he not agree. So now so they tell they talk the matter, beg, 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 the matter don't they hurt. Before you know, they don't they pack by Ibos for northern region. They don't they pack by them. They put them for trailer. They send. They come back to Israel. They everywhere. Don't they all? Big, 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 big. The pressure was high. Now from there, when the matter got too hot, Ojuku say, "Okay, restructure. If now so, restructure. Let's restructure the country." Now in Ojuku and go and take go Abori for Ghana. Take go to Miti. Abori are called to say, okay, made a made a restructure the Gong Kong. They don't plan, they don't sign paper finish at least for peace to reign. As Gowan land for airport, a receive call. That was the end of Solomon Bandi. Gowan say lie lie. That thing we will sign for that side. Now Ghana we for sign and Ghana. Now the thing for expire. Now we don't call Nigeria. So there is no more agreement again. Now in lead to the Biafra civil war mentality we come claim the lives of millions of people when the war lasts for many years so now what really happen now it be that so now the very sharp question i'll be saying why did they not give ojuku because why ojuku is going to pay back and they refuse to give ojuku if now you will you give ojuku Yes or no? Hey God, he don't bust. 